Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to download and install our free header and footer for Divi's electronic store layout pack. This is the result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to head over to this blog post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Next, we need to download this uh, layout. So we're going to click here on get it for free today. Add our email address, click on download. And then you need to click here where it says download the files. Great. So what we need to do next is to unzip this file. So I'm going to come over here, show in Finder. And here is our file. I'm just going to take this to the desktop so it's much easier for me to do everything from there. Okay, so here is my zipped file. I need to unzip it by double clicking it. And now we have this folder. And now we need to go in. And this is the file that we need to import into our template. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to drag this over to my other screen and then I'm going to go in and add it onto our website. All right, so here I am on my WordPress website. So what I need to do is to scroll all the way down here to Divi. Now to install the template, you need to go to Theme Builder. Now, of course, you need to make sure you have Divi installed and then you want to click here on Portability. So it's these two arrows, click on Import. Now, remember that file that we downloaded, which is right here, the .json file. This is what we need to import here. So I'm going to drag and drop it. And then I'm just going to click on Import Theme Builder Template. Okay, so here we can see we have our header and footer. So before we continue, let's just take a look and see what our website looks like. So I've just opened this in a new tab. And right now we can see that we have the standard header. And then when I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, this is the footer that we have. But uh, since we uh, imported this template, and we're just about to hit save changes, this header and footer should change. So I'm going to click on save. And then now if I come back and refresh this page, notice what happens to the header and footer. So our footer here has completely changed. We have this email opt-in. Uh, we also have our logo down here. And we also have our copyright here at the bottom. Now, if we take a look at the top, you can see here this looks different. So for this to really match, we need to have the corresponding uh, page which goes with this design. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a brand new page. So I'm just going to come over here, click on page. So the layout that we need is uh, the layout for the electronics. So I'm just going to close this and give this a title of electronics store, uh, use DV Builder. And then I'm going to come over here to choose pre-made layout. So this electronics store already has pages that are already created for you, which match our design. So if we take a look here, we have the about page, we have uh, the store page. So we have uh, all these pages that are created for us ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this one here so that you see how it matches, because ideally you want to use these header and footers that match the layout pack as well, because it's going to take a long time to or a long time to go in and try and uh, match it with your website. So you'd rather have the header, the footer, and all the pages that correspond with that template. Okay, so it looks like everything has been loaded now. Let's publish the page and exit the Visual Builder. So as you can see now, this is a seamless design. Everything looks really cool and uh, things work well together here. So as I scroll down here, we have our footer there. And this is a much better layout because of how things are looking here. Okay, so now that we have our header and footer all in place, the next step now is to go in and uh, show you how you can go in and customize these colors and also the text, just in case you may have different colors on your existing store or you want to use the same template but add different colors as opposed to the colors that we have right here. So I've opened up the uh, header layout. So let's go step by step and choose the areas that we need to go in and customize. OK, so I'm going to go into a click mode here. So the first thing we're going to work with is this background here. So I'm going to go into my section settings, go into background. And this is this little this color here that we have. So just to show you, I can go in and make it dramatic like that. Or we can just keep it very subtle like how it was. OK, let's close out of here. Next, we also have this row. So if we go in, let's go to the background. And again, we have this color right here. 
So if you wanted to change this to your own color, you can just go like that. And as you can see here, it is updating. So that is pretty much how you can go in and update that color, that background color. All right. So next we, uh, we also have uh, the button here. Now you may notice that uh, it may be a bit difficult here to go in. I'll show you in a moment quickly how you can go in and make changes to that. So here we have our row settings as well. Let's go to the background and on this one here, you can see there's no background, which is okay. But if we go into the specific column, this is where we get this yellow right here. So let's say I want to change this to that. You can see now it is updated to that color. So that is how this was created. Okay. If you want to change the next color, you just come over here to the second column. And this is the one with the social media icons. You can change the color as well like that. You want to go back, maybe you want to change the last one. Just click on this gear icon and then you can change it like that. So that is how you go in and customize these background colors over here. Now, while we add it, let's take a look here and see how we can go in and make sure our social media icons are working for us. Ideally, you want to link these to your landing pages for your or your profile pages for your social media. So the first one here is Facebook. So you want to click here on this gear icon, go to link, and this is where you want to add your URL, just like that. Okay. Go back, do the same for Twitter. Click on link. You can link it up over here. Now, let's say you want to add another network. So all you need to do is to duplicate an existing one. And you can see here, you, we have two YouTubes now. So all you have to do now is to click the gear icon, but this time you're going to click over here. You're going to get a drop down and then you can just add the network that you need to add here. Now you notice that we have a color here. So now to get rid of that uh, or to customize that color, all you need to do is to go here, go into design icon. And then the first one here is the icon color. So this is where you can go in and change your icon color. Now, that's not what we want to change right now. So I'm going to go back, right click, uh, reset item styles. Now that removes the background. That's if you want to use this without the background. But if you just want to make sure that everything looks um, the same, you can just copy item styles like that. Right click, paste item styles, and now they look the same. So that's what you need to do there to uh, add all your social media buttons. All right, so I'm going to close out of here now. Next, let's go into our menu. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. So now on this menu, there's a few things that we can go in and change. You can already see that when I mouse over the, um, the logo, I can go in and make changes to the logo right away. So I'm going to come over here to the logo. I can add borders if I needed to like that. But of course, I'm going to keep this, you know, as simple as possible. Let's work on the text. So our menu text can be changed over here. The font that we have here is Monster Ad. So let's change this to something like Poppins. So you can change this to whatever font you want. And you can see it's been updated. Now we can add our active color. So that is the color that shows up when a page is selected. And I've just chosen my color here. Over here on the font weight, it's set to bold. But of course, you can change this to semi-bold. You can also make it all caps. You can also increase the size and you can also change the colors. So now you can see our colors there have been updated. So that is how you go in and make changes to that. All right. So pretty much that's what we need to do here. Um, if you're happy with all the changes, just hit save and then close out of here. Next, you want to make customizations to the footer. Click here on this pencil icon. And just like how we did, we just need to go into each and every element and uh, make changes to it. So here, let's start with our main section. So we're going to go to the background and we can see we have a color here. And just to prove that our color there is solid, we can just go in and try to make changes here. So that is the color that we have. And I'm just going to close out of here. So as you can see, we just pretty much created a style here based on uh, just adding our own colors, but I'm not going to make any changes to this now. I'm going to move on to the next thing. And here is our row settings. Now, sometimes you may not be sure 
where these changes or settings are. The quickest way to uh, locate these changes is by clicking these three little dots here. And then you want to go to view modified styles. So this will show you exactly where things were changed. So right now I know we have a custom gutter width here. We can change this like that. We also have our width, which is set to 95%. So we can adjust the width here. We also have a maximum width. We can also adjust our maximum width here. Top and bottom padding. We have 100 pixels, which is the space here. If I were to make it smaller, you can see now it's getting smaller and smaller. And also we have 3% padding, both on the left and the right. So again, we can increase this or decrease this. Finally, we have this box shadow uh, applied to it, which is this style right here. So those are all the settings that you can do to our row. All right, so moving on, these are all text modules. So if I were to go in here, uh, I can just uh, make quick changes to this. Now, let me show you a quick way that you can go in and uh, make your changes. I'm going to hold down the uh, command key. So I'm going to do what is known as multi-select. So right now I'm holding down my command key. So I've selected all these. Now I can go in and click here on this gear icon and I can start customizing this. So let's say I want to go to my design, change, uh, say my heading here. Notice what happens when I change my color. All of them are updated. I'll do it one more time. So you can see all of them are updating, which is fantastic. So I can continue here, maybe perhaps increase the size. And you can see they're all increasing in size. So once you're happy with that, you can just save. And then click away. Next, we have uh, these text modules. Now, these ones are important because you need to add your own text over here. And if you want to link this, you can just click here on this chain icon and then add your URL in here. Next, if you want to uh, make some design changes to this, just click on the paintbrush icon. Our font here is set to default. Let's say we're going to change this to Poppins, like that. We can decrease the size a little bit. We can change the colors. So you can see here that this is quite uh, easy to use. So now that I've uh, made my changes, I can either save or, I'll, in this case, I'll just close out of this. Okay, so moving on, we have this email opt-in. Now, this email opt-in is very important. I've just clicked on this gear icon to go into my email opt-in settings. So you need to have an email service provider beforehand be, to make this work. The idea here is to grow our mailing list as people are coming and visiting our website. So you want to make sure that when someone hits subscribe, they get added to the email database. So this is what we need to set up now. So I'm going to come over here to email account. So there are several email service providers. So if I click on this drop down, you can see we have Fluent CRM, FeedBurner, uh, HubSpot, we have ConvertKits, MailPoet, and so on. So all these are services that you can choose. So once you've uh, set up your list, you want to uh, make sure you link it up over here. So you click here on uh, Select List, and if you click on Fetch, this will show you all the lists that you have in your email service provider account. Choose the one that you want your emails to be added to. Then once you've done that, Click on add and pretty much when someone click, comes over here as their email address and hit subscribe, they are going to be added onto your database so that you can send them emails in the future. Once that is done, the next step now is to um, come over here to success action. So there's two ways you can set this up. So when someone hits subscribe, you can choose a custom message that you may want to show over here to say uh, we'll get back to you shortly or thank you for subscribing or whatever it is. Right now, it just says success. But I think you need to you need to have a much better description than that. Or the second option is to create a thank you page, which you can then link by coming over here to redirect to custom URL. And then you want to add the URL over here. So when someone uh, comes over here and says subscribe, they are going to be redirected to a thank you page, which has a custom message. You can have a video on it. You can have text and so on. Okay, so moving on, we have this uh, line over here. So let's go ahead and uh, customize this. I'm going to go into my row settings. So I'm going to come over here to design. 
And then over here on border, I can see that this is where this line was added. So I can go in here, choose the top border, and I can either increase or decrease this and or even change the color like that. OK, so I'm going to close out of here. Finally, we have this text module, which can be updated by just going into the text settings and then making your changes here. And then once you've made your changes, they're going to be updated here and pretty much you are good to go. So that is how you go in and customize this footer to match the rest of your websites. And also, this is how you add all your colors, your images, and so on. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.